Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is so wonderful, so great, so majestic. His word is alive. His word feeds us. His word creates. His word brings things to pass. The word of God is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing as of uh, soul, joint, marrow, soul, intents of the heart. The word of God is the word of God. It is God's word, and it doesn't leave anything out. Well, we'd like to welcome you here to our Sunday service. Agape Word Church is a New Testament church. We are built and established on the word of truth. And the thing about it, we've been what? Begotten, born again by the word of truth. We're going to continue our series on spiritual bondage. Uh, just a little recap. Uh, I think it was in Galatians, the fifth chapter, that we started when we first started the series. Galatians 5 and 1. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled or snared again with the yoke of bondage. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this glorious morning where we have not only the heavenly host present, but most of all, the Holy Spirit to give us utterance concerning the word, concerning your word that has been quickened to us. Lord, we just want to thank you that our hearts are open to receive all the fullness of God through his word. And Heavenly Father, as we minister your word, as always, we speak it boldly and accurately in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we just want to thank you and praise you for your goodness, your mercy, and your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We found out that bondage was a type of slavery, or it is slavery, and it could be involuntary servitude. In other words, you got put hooked up with something that you didn't know about. Then we found out that it was a state of being bound by or subject to an external control. That the external control behind the scenes is a spiritual force. You're either going to be a bondservant of Satan or one of God. Then, that's why it's called spiritual bondage, because of the force that you can't see that's causing people or causing you to act the way you do. You can be in bondage to sin. You can be in bondage to cigarettes, bondage to alcohol. And so Jesus Christ comes on the scene to deliver us from that. We also found out that the, uh, we talked about the wiles of the devil. We talked about his wiles, his devices, his deception. He only has one bag of tricks. He only travels one road, and that is to come to the believer's mind. He wants to make the mind a playground. Now, the devil, the word devil comes from the Greek word, Diablos, you're right. <laughs> he is the arch enemy, arch enemy of the faith, but it also talks about his mode of operation. The devil is one who strikes repeatedly again and again and again until he finally breaks down one's mental resistance. When uh, this mental resistance has been broken down, then he strikes with all of his fury to penetrate the mind and to take that person's mind and emotions captive. Now, he don't quit. He don't give up. But uh, you, if you, um, the Bible tells us to renew our minds with the word of God. Only a renewed mind that can stand steadfast, can stand stead, steadfast because you know what the word says, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the word of God, and bringing it into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You can't listen to the devil talk to you, not even one minute. So this is how the enemy works. He repeatedly hits you with lies, suggestions, accusations, 
allegations and one slanderous assault after another and another and another, and he tries to wear you down and then take you captive at your weakest moment when you say, I just, I just give up. I, I just, I, I'm just tired of this. It must be true. No, you have to resist it. You got to resist. That means you got to come against him with it is written. It is written. If God said it, that's what it is. I am what God says I am. I have what God says I have, and I can do what God says I can do. Everything else don't matter. This is the mental attitude and the fortitude that you have to have. So with that said, let's go to, let's see, we've, we've done the wiles of the devil, his devices, and his deception. Uh, let's look at the snares. Come with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Look at verse 26. 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, verse 26. And they, and that they may recover, recover, or uh, come to their senses, what? That, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive, by him at his will. So we see that that snare, that snare is a device. Anything that serves to entrap, entangle, or catch unawares. It's a trap. The devil always have traps set up for God's people. But then you got to realize that you got the spirit of God in you, and he knows everything. But we are here things, and lo and behold, if we say, nah, I'm going to do it this way. I mean, you'll hear something come up in you telling you what to do. And then all of a sudden, you will just do the opposite. So you got to train yourself not to do that. You have to train you not to do it. No, I always yield to what I hear from the Spirit of God. Now, you got to understand this too. Your spirit, the Holy Spirit is in your spirit. The, your spirit hangs around the Holy Spirit. So when things of God come to you and tell you don't do this or don't do that, and you, what's go, what overrides it? Your flesh? Your desire to satisfy yourself? That's what it all amounts to. And so you'll go ahead. Now nah, I'm going to go ahead on and do, do this and do that. Uh, <laughs> I have a testimony. I always have a testimony. Because they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And the word in their testimony. Uh, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And uh, Jesus Christ bore hypothyroidism on the cross with all its symptoms. So you would say, what is that? Well, that is a disease or a sickness that your thyroid is hyperactive and it causes you to just drop weight. And you, can eat, you can eat much, a whole lot, and you eat little. It still has that same effect. Doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with how much you eat or how less you eat. It's a disease that kicks in and it causes the drop the weight, drop the weight. So anyway, this is the first time I've ever been on any kind of medication. I mean, first time. And so <laughs> I had taken that medication and it was it's been 30 days. And so I said, well, I prayed for every pill. Told it in the name of Jesus, I sanctify you with the word of God in prayer. I receive you with thanksgiving, and you're going to do what you're supposed to do in my body. I buy, with all side effects bound. All right? So I said, well, listen, listen, listen to me now. So I said, well, shucks, it's 30 days. I, I'm getting off of these things. <laughs> uh, let's see, I maybe dropped down to 94, somewhere in the 90s. And so I had gotten to about 102. And uh, so I said, nah. I said, oh, no, let me tell you now. I took my medicine morning, noon, and night. And all through the day. Because, see, uh, pills don't heal. Jesus Christ, Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am your physician. So now he, we have doctors. So you want to believe that there are understudies, that God called them and made them available to the body of Christ. Okay, I didn't believe that all the time. <laughs> so look, 
So I said, I know what I'm going to do. Instead of taking three tablets, I'm going to take two. <laughs> the fight was on. All of this, everything just came back. Came back. So I got the plan. Then I heard this. You calculated that. What did your spirit say? I said, well, Lord, thank you. I'm whole. I'm sound. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. The pills keep the symptoms down so you can fight the good fight of faith. So what did I do? Heavenly Father, I want to. <laughs> so see what I'm saying? Your mind is a part of your flesh. Um, your, we, you got a mind that's a part of your, con your conscious and your mind is a part of your spirit. Then you got your brain. Your brain is an organ that takes in information and gives it to you. But you can't listen to that brain. It's not what? Say. It's an organ. It's a physical organ. And so then the Lord said, told me, say, well, you'll know when to stop taking them. By your spirit that's in you, you'll know. So when you start sitting down reasoning and calculating stuff and trying to work it out, you might as well just ball that up and throw it in the garbage can because you did not work out things that were incalculable. You can't factor in everything, but the Holy Ghost can. And you just have to wait and trust on him. So then I went back to my two favorite words, faith and patience. Faith and patience. And uh, uh, it's just amazing what your mind will tell you. And you will listen to it. You better listen to the Spirit of God. If you in doubt, and Lord, I, I don't know, is this me talking or is it you? Just talk to him. That's all you got to do. That's the fellowship and the communion you have with him. So this has really been a learning process with me. Medicine, a learning process. And so uh, Sister Ruth say, uh, she say, uh, well, Sister, we're talking about refills. And I said, now, Lord, I ain't getting no refill. What is she telling me get a refill for? I'm healed and I'm whole. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for Sister Ruth. <laughs> Jojo, go get me a refill. See, you, you, um, you want to find out things about yourself. And so I've noticed some things about myself. I'm not, I'm not always right. Everybody don't believe the same way. We got the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And the, the Holy Spirit and the Word are minister to you on your level. Everybody ain't on the same level. So what you want to do, you want to listen to people because it's God speaking to you. He don't care. If you listen, he can speak to you to anybody. But if you, I said, now, Lord, I, I, I coming up in, in my life, raised up in my family, if you needed to know something, call, call here, she know. Okay? I made it my business to know. But now it's spiritual. You have to believe that God, you're listening for what he going to say. Don't care who he going to say it through. But if you get an attitude like, well, I'm talking about in the, uh, uh, when Adam was created in the world in the beginning. Well, what's in the world now? See, that's, that, that's, that messes up your own spirit. That messes you up. When somebody says something and you go got something to say to it or with it, or not necessarily against it, but it's almost like you're trying to pitch yourself up a little bit higher for what they know. You got to be careful about that. I noticed that this morning when you got ready to pray, and you, you said something, and then I said something else. Uh, no, no, you better find out about you in Christ. Uh, the love of God that's been shared abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit, it's God's love in you to love what? other people with, especially the brethren. We all on the same team. And the word of God coming out of Sister Ruth's mouth is the word of God coming out of Sister Ruth's mouth with her personality, with anybody. Well, you better not be looking at her personality. You better be listening for the word. And so it's these little things, some of these little things that I got to get away, get away from. Because see, when it comes to the word of God, just because this is my job and I do spend, I spend eight hours with the word. 
got rid of Cox, got rid of Direct TV, what else? <laughs> Looking at Keith Moore and Kenny Copeland. And okay, Lord, what? I'm start taking me my little walks, and and start pulling some uh, grass out of the flowers. You always got something to do, then to let your heart be defiled with some of that stuff that's on TV. Is anything on TV with them programs? And I've looked at them, and I have watched them. There is nothing holy. It feeds the flesh. You can sit there and just enjoy. You don't have to think. Just and what is it doing? It's taking the life of God from you and feeding the flesh. Why? When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, who do you belong to? Him. You're no more a product of the world. You belong to him. And in some areas, we are bound. I used to be bound to that TV. Oh, yeah, I do my word. I spend the first part of the morning from, from 4 o'clock to 12 o'clock in the word. But then I sit down and I watch the TV. Now, what, what did the TV do? Start erasing the light. God is not going to contend. Be ye holy, because I am holy. Righteousness leads to holiness. Right. And then I said, Lord, he said, well, you was ministering on healing. You started with pardon of sin and healing goes together. Pardon of sin and healing goes together. Well, this can't be minister. Some things the devil just don't want you to get out, especially things on healing. He don't want that out because half, no, three quarters of Christians are sick, hooked on medicine instead of the word of God, the word of God. When I wake up in the morning in my bathroom, when I go to the bathroom, I got in my mirror. He said, let it not depart from your eyes. I got Isaiah 53. I got 1 Peter 2.24. I got Matthew 8.17 typed out. When I go in the bathroom, I stand there and read. Where else you go to all the time? The refrigerator. I got it on the refrigerator. And I not read it. That's the word. The word, it, the word has healed me. The word has healed me. Well, you said, well, you might look at me and say, well, you still you don't look like it. Well, that's your problem. The healing takes place on the inside in, the, in your spirit. Then it manifests itself in your body. I remember the first time I got up here, I couldn't stay up here no more than 30 minutes. <laughs> That's why the message was 30 minutes or 35. And then I, the last time I got up here, I stayed over an hour. See, the word of God is progressive. It works. And in the meantime, the Lord is teaching you things. He didn't put the sickness on me. But he can take the opportunity to let me learn some things about me, about me and him, where he wants me, what he wants me to do, to teach me how to hear from him and not be rationalizing and, and calculating and figuring out this and figuring out that. That's not believing. That's not believing. When you start calculating, you better say, Jesus, uh, 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 what, what did word say? Come, let us, let us. Let us what? Let us reason together. <laughs> Let us reason together. All right. So that's the testimony. You don't listen to your reasoning. Your, my, my reasoning don't want me to take no medicine. It wants to beat me down. No, you want to listen to what the Lord say. If you take medicine, you pray over it. Not the whole bottle. Every time you get a tablet, you pray over it. No, uh-uh. My body was not designed for medication. It was designed for the fullness of God. And his life is in me. I keep that before me in faith. In faith, here, you are healed. You were healed 2,000 years ago. Not just today. You was healed. Isaiah saw in the future and he prophesied. And then Jesus died on the cross and made it. Made it when he said, it is finished. And besides, I was on, when Jesus was on the cross, I was on that with him. The old here, Lee. With any kind of sin, sickness, disease, poverty, and lack, when Jesus was nailed on the cross, I was crucified with him. I was nailed on the cross too. When Jesus died on the cross, he took care of everything, spirit, soul, and body. He took care of everything because he want us to have life and have it more abundant. He wants you to enjoy the, your life. And sickness is a bondage. Sin is bondage. Not having enough money is bondage. 
all this sowing you done done in the name of Jesus, you better throw that money. That money is sitting out there. What you already done harvest, you leaving the harvest in the field. You better call it in. But all that money that you done put in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. It's good, huh? It's good. Amen. I said, now, Lord, the last time I weighed, I weighed 100.6 pounds. That's the last time I weighed. I feel good, yeah. Why? Because by his stripes, I was here. That's why I feel good. I am here. So I said, oh, Lord, this, this, this size ain't too bad. <laughs> I said, yes. I said, nah, mm -mm. I'm, I'm really. So be content and just let the Lord do the work. You know, be content and let the Lord do the work. Lord, as long as I'm healthy and as long as I can minister the word. Ooh, huh. What would happen if the, no, look, I would go on this. You know me. I go on the street. I put my own tin up. <laughs> I go on the street and minister on the corner. The word of God is to minister. You've been given a ministry of reconciliation. When the last time you ministered the word to somebody? You, you, you just think the word is just for you? No, you have to minister the word. We represent the Lord Jesus Christ down here in the earth realm. So you minister the word. Don't be scared to minister the word. Because when you get to Jesus, he's going to say, when the last time you ministered the word? You think I'm just getting you fat on the word so you can... Take it. Your needs already met. You work for Jesus, your needs met already. You minister the word. Every opportunity you get. You don't care if they don't listen to you. You doing what Jesus say. You can walk to somebody and say, hey, look, you need some healing? Anybody you walk up to, they going to need some healing. <laughs> and you start off with that. If you plant healing, you receive healing. If you pray for somebody to be healed, you receive the virtue of healing. Say, oh, y'all been praying for me for healing? Oh, yes, y'all got it too. You got healing built. You got it. Now, who's in you? The healer? Whose hands is this if he in you? It's his hand. Lay hands on the sick. All right. See that? We go follow the spirit of God. All right. So we over here in 2 Timothy, the second chapter. And look, it started in verse 24. It says, the servant of the Lord must not strive, must not be quarrelsome. And so I've been just listening to me, okay? But be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient, and patient. I made this a part of my profession. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. But now look what it says. If God will pre-adventure, pre give them repentance to the what? acknowledging of the truth. What is God's desire, his will? That men be saved. We heard that with prayer this morning as we was praying for the body of Christ and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Oh, uh, the devil don't care if you get saved. Because see, salvation is salvation. You'll go to heaven. But when you come into the knowledge of the truth and know your dominion and your rights, oh no, you can govern his affairs in this earth realm. You can keep him out of your life. And, verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. So we saw the wiles of the devil, his devices and deception. Now he has traps. He done trapped this person and taken him captive by beating him, beating him, tearing down his mind, made a, a way into his mind. Now he's taken captive his emotion captive his senses and so now this person is in a deceptive state where he believes a lie and so only only wait let's see come over here see and the servant of the lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men after tea uh, we want to get that person you got to pray for him first get the leading of the holy spirit uh, this, you, you got to make this your job. We're not talking about, well, okay, you do this Monday and then you forget all about it. Get your little writing tablet and keep it before you, things you need to do 
concerning people that you come in contact with. You can bind them spirits off of them. You can't bind them, but you can bind them spirits off. But you got to have faith and patience. You can't be looking to see if things change. You got to be what? Believing that they change. You can't be looking because things that you see, they temporary. You're dealing with eternal things. And we're dealing with people's lives. And we don't want people going to hell. They don't even know that all they need to do is receive Jesus Christ as heart, heartfelt things, not just a mental sin. So, come with me to Galatians 6. Galatians 6 and 1. Look what it says. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such and one in the spirit of meekness, considering your own self, lest you also be tested. Bear you one another's burden, and so fulfill the, law, fulfill the law of Christ. What law is that? That's the royal law. What, when, when, when you operate in the things of God, what does love, first thing love does? It covers a multitude of sins. You don't take into account what people done did you. you Jesus didn't. You're on a mission. For if a man think him to be himself to be something when he is nothing, apart from the Lord, we are nothing. He deceived his own self. You need the Lord in everything you do. You need him in your talking. You need him in your thinking. And you show sure need him to work through you to do the work. Christ in me during the works. Okay? Now let's go to James 5. And... 19. See, now these are people that's in opposition to the truth. When you're in opposition against the truth, you're against Jesus Christ. And the devil got your hoodwink, and you don't know you're in opposition to it. If you're in, in opposition to the truth, you're in opposition to yourself. You're opposing your own self. James 5, 19. Brethren, if any of you do error... If any of you do wonder from the truth and one converts him or brings or turns him back to the truth. See, the, the Christians, in their ignorance, they turn away from God and they don't know it. So, they say you can't see the forest for the trees. If you're a tree and you're in the middle of the forest, you can't see what's wrong with you. But then they got somebody outside that's spiritual that sees that problem. He gets with the Holy He prays for you, get with the Holy Spirit to see, Lord, what can I do? Well, you may not hear nothing in a week. Well, you think you're going to hear something when you get down there? Mm -mm. That's where the faith and the patience come from. That's where the endurance come in. If you are serious about this. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and want brethren and one converts him, let him know that he which turned, converted the sinner. Now, see, what do you call the brethren that you're dealing with? He called him a sinner. All unrighteousness is sin. If you operate in unrighteousness, what are you? What are you? You're a sinner. We're not talking about not, you're, you're, you're a sinning Christian. <laughs> Convert the sinner from the errors of his way, shall save a soul from death, and shall hide or cover a multitude of sin. If you convert him, you did it out of love. You did it out of love. And what that love, that love is going to cover all of his actions uh, that's wrong. Then you go, if you don't see what's wrong, you can minister to them better because you're doing it by the Spirit of God. And the Holy Ghost knows all about these people. And so he says, you go save a soul from death. What kind of death? Romans? No, he already saved. He saved. How many Christians you know, and they call on the name of Jesus and they operate like alley cats? A whole bunch of them. They go to church on Sunday. 
Four times a month. Uh, maybe I know on communion Sunday they go. So we ain't talking about somebody who has an evil, depraved nature. We talking about people that receive Jesus Christ as a savior. What did I say go? Romans 6. My job is to bring you into the knowledge of the truth. Don't, don't fool yourself. You see things for what they are. I didn't tell myself, no, Hearly, you ain't sick. You're not sick. You're not sick. Hearly, you are sick. Something is wrong. Lord, Lord sent, sent people around me to tell me what to do since I wasn't going to do nothing. Ooh, I was going to stay with the word, babe, because I know the word work. <laughs> Went to the doctor, got some pills, and and put that uh, put that heart that my heart was up to 125. It's supposed to be 74. I came here to the church, and 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 so Sister Ruth Candace and Jackie was framed for me. I took Sister Ruth's hand and put on my heart. I think. <laughs> now, because you love the Lord, no, 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 no. Because the Lord loves you, and He got a calling on you. He's going to put everything in your way to try to open your senses so you can go to the doctor. Now, if you keep on backing up, backing up, and staying with the word, and you fighting, and you getting weary. Oh, no, no, no. The pill is what? To bring the symptom down so you can fight. <laughs> I had to keep telling myself that cookie. Because every time I look, I say, oh, Lord, you can't do this here. If you do this, it ain't going to work. You, get, you got the nine, you got to pray over, you got to get in agreement with it, and the Lord, involve the Lord in it. The Lord was already involved in it, and take it. Because me, uh-uh, no. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for doctors. Amen. Okay, look in verse 16, Romans 6 and 16. We're talking about that death. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey. See, he was obeying unrighteousness. His servants, you are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. See, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is not, the Lord will turn, the Lord will turn you over to the destruction of the devil for the flesh. You'd be surprised. Well, I was calling on the name of the Lord. You'd be surprised when sick people get real, real sick. Well, what you think you'll say? Lord, have mercy. See, that means I'm ready to listen. So we don't want to be in obedience unto sin and death because we're dead to sin. In Christ Jesus, we are dead to sin. When we were crucified with Christ, we died to sin, sickness, disease, poverty, and lack. Most of all, spiritual death. We don't go to hell. All right. Now, let's go back over here to that 30 minutes, huh? Let's go back over here to uh, 2 Timothy. Verse 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. So don't, don't get into no quarrels. Check yourself. When, you, when somebody gets ready to talk to you and you get this huffy, puffy feeling inside, that is wrong. You can't have no, no kind of feelings like that. You, how you go hear from the Spirit of God? When people get on your nerves, your last nerve, uh-uh, that is wrong. You better get your nerves saved. You so better. We are here to do the work of the ministry. But be gentle unto all. You got to practice this stuff. This is obedience unto the word of God. You don't want to disobey this. After teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth. If God go change their heart. What do you mean? If God go change their heart. Do they want to recover? Now that ain't your, you pray to them until the Lord said that's enough. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Now, God turns it around with that servant or with the one that's spiritual to restore him. Now we can get him to do what? God's will. Chapter 3, verse 1. This, no. What do you mean? If you don't know nothing else, know this. Know what? The contents of verses 2 to 5. This know also, so he including this with that, 
that in the last days, what do you mean? The expression in the last days refers to the time immediately before the rapture of the church. Oh, they've been saying that for a long time. Oh, the rapture of the church ain't even in the Bible. Whether catching or where of the church. That means you don't believe the rapture. I'm, I, we leaving out of here. And what? We going to be prepared to leave. If you're not prepared to leave, you ain't going. <laughs> Think about that. You want to be left down here? No. Okay. This know also that in the last days, perilous time, what kind of perilous time? Speaks of hard, difficult, dangerous times which Christians living just before the rapture will encounter. Look what it says. For men shall be lovers of their own self. He said, own self. Mankind of fondness, a lacking, and affection of self. You're supposed to be denying self. You can't let you do whatever you want to do. You don't belong to you. Well, today I'm going to uh, binge on the TV. Mm-hmm. While you binging, what you think they're doing? The devil doing? Setting up stuff for you. You don't, this is one thing you got, this is discipline. You, you want to grow and come into maturity. Jesus only wants what kind of fruit? Right, right, good fruit. Right. He, he can't, he can't, you can't feed pe people green fruit. Just come in, you can't feed people green fruit. I ain't say you can, they have fruit that is green that you can eat, but that green fruit is right. Men shall be lovers of their own self. Look what it says. Covetous. Covetous to be fond of money. And affection for money. Ah, let's go over here and uh, let's go over here to First Timothy. But we, yeah, let's go to First Timothy. That's that's over. Look in verse si chapter six. Look at verse nine. First Timothy six and nine. Now remember now covetousness. Covetousness is just like idolatry. Look what it says. But they that will be rich, do what? Fall into temptation and a who? Snare. A snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. See? You, your, your will, your, you will, you desire to be rich. My, my desire is to be rich in the knowledge and wisdom of God. That'll bring the money. That'll bring the wealth and the riches to me. For the love of money, not money, the love of it, is the root of all kinds of evil, which while they covet after, they have error from the faith. Oh, I don't have to believe that. I can go buy it. Oh, I don't, have, I don't have to believe the Lord for this. I can uh, go do this. The one thing that protects the, the rich man is what? His what? Tithe. His tithe. If he does it from the heart, his tithe protects him. For the love of money is the root of all evil. What did that, uh, what that, that lady who threw in the, the, the widow with the mite? She threw in all of her living. All of her living. She put in a whole paycheck. And what happened? She got a harvest. <laughs> Which was, she said, look, she said, I ain't got enough to pay my bills. Now, you, you, better, you better have the leading of the Holy Spirit with that. You pay your tithes. You make sure you pay your tithes. Your offering is to you. Now, God ain't going to go over your will. If you don't want to pay your tithes, you don't have to. He will not make you pay your tithes. But I tell you, baby, tithing is a benefit. Even, even with healing. That's right, baby. All you got to do is break out all your tithes. She said, Lord. <laughs> Tithe. Pay your tithes. Amen. Uh, AJ, 
out of high school, had a job waiting on him. Was waiting on him before he got out of high school, but he wasn't old enough. See, that's God. Noonie, scholarship. Mom and dad ain't had to pay no school fees. School clothes, what Noonie did? Walked into a job. That's God. Why? Mama and daddy paid tithes. Paying tithes, you bless your children even before they born. Your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, from generations to generation. Hmm. Tithe. Jack and JoJo prosperous. Sister Ruth grandchildren prosperous. Candace children prosperous. Phyllis children prosper. Tithe. So, verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, all kinds, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, you don't want to be, you don't want to fall in that category. But what I want you to see is that in verse 9, but they that will or desire to be rich fall into testings and a snare because they, they, their will is, is wrong. They will should be surrendered unto the Lord to do what he wants them to do. You are free will, more age, and you can do what you want with your will. But uh, <clears throat> when God bought you, he bought your will too. He set your will free so you could serve him. Okay, let's go back over to 2 Timothy, just over the next page. Um. I'm going to pick this up uh, Wednesday. Because see, down here in uh, verse uh, 6, 2 Timothy 3 and 6, for of this sort, coming out of this bunch, are they which creep into houses <laughs> and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and ever able to come to what? To the knowledge of the truth. Well, now, what did Jesus preadventure would give them to the acknowledging of the truth? See, everything is designed to come against the truth. Who is the truth? The Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'll pick this back up Wednesday. What I want to do is uh, go into a communion service, and I want the tape to continue to run. And... Uh, like I said, we'll pick this back up. Okay. Now, Brother Copeland has a book, How to Receive Communion. Uh, you can go on Kenny Copeland's uh, uh, website. The book is free. You can order it. So. I've, I've read this book at least 20 times, and I, I said, well, Lord, I could, I could minister it. But no, I'm going to read out of it. When a believer partakes of the Lord's Supper, he should do so with full understanding of its significance. Communion, to many people, has become only a religious observance. It has a much deeper meaning than that. See, we, we should know that. But you get in the habit of doing things, and after a while, it becomes a what? Ritual. It becomes a form and fashion. Uh, in praying, it should be, it should be, any kind of prayer to God should be heartfelt. And you don't just be praying and your head be going everywhere. You got to settle yourself down, close your mind, and in faith with the presence of the Holy Spirit and pray. Oh, that's not in here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Y'all know me. All right. <laughs> okay. The communion table is an emblem of Jesus' sacrifice for us. Jesus took bread and blessed it, broke it, and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. This is found in Matthews 26, 26 through 28 verse. Primarily, the church has centered its attention on the wine 
as a symbol of Jesus' blood that was shed for sin. We take the emblem of blood and say, thank God we are delivered from sin. And that's true. Praise God for that. But the blood is only half of communion. The bread is the emblem of Jesus' body that was broken for us. This emblem for his body is just as important as the emblem for his blood. And I have found that out. That is just as important. According to Isaiah 53, 4 to 5, Jesus' sacrifice covered every area of man's existence. From the time you get up in the morning till you go to bed at night and while you're sleeping, he protecting us. He bore spiritual torments for sin, mental distress for our worry, so you ain't got to worry, care and fear, as well as physical pain for our sickness and disease. The stripes he bore were for our healing. With his stripes, we are healed. God gave everything he had to redeem mankind from the curse. I mean, the whole world to redeem the whole human race. For us to receive only part of his sacrifice is an insult to him. When we receive communion, we are receiving his body and his blood. Every time we partake, we should examine ourselves closely according to 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-eight to 29. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The Lord's body is physical, and the Lord's body is spiritual. When I say the Lord's body is physical, this is me talking. We talking about our brothers and sisters. How you treat them. What you say about them. How you think about them. Well, how you go do that to people you see and then talking about you love the Lord who you don't see. You can't do that. Everybody in here have the spirit of God and I got to treat you like Jesus Christ. We got to treat each other like the words say. We love you. There is much more involved in receiving communion than most Christians realize. God instituted the Lord's Supper for a reason. Now, you can take this at home. You can take it anytime you need to. When you receive it, you should be ready to partake of everything Jesus' sacrifice provided. Salvation, peace of mind, healing, total prosperity. In the past, we have missed the full meaning of communion by not completely judging ourselves when we have partaken of it. We have been ready to receive his blood and quick to judge ourselves where sin is concerned. We judge ourselves of sin and repented of it. But what about his body? It was broken for us. It was bruised for us. The stripes laid on Jesus' back were for our healing. Oh, yes, healing. <laughs> At communion, we should judge ourselves where sickness is concerned as well. Whoo! See, see, you get ready to take communion, you got any pain in your body. I don't care how, I don't care what it is. I don't care if the tip of your finger is hurting. We judge ourselves for sin, but you got to judge yourself for what's in your body. Whether it's high blood pressure, well, let, let me go ahead and read. At communion, we should judge ourselves where sickness is concerned as well. Jesus purchased our healing at Calvary just as he purchased our salvation. With this in mind, we say, Lord, it's not right that I should suffer from sickness and disease. I judge it now as being from Satan, and I reject it. I refuse to receive it any longer. I partake of the sacrifice of your body, and I receive the healing that you provided in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's powerful. <laughs> when you partake of communion, make a point of judging yourself to the fullest extent. Don't just receive it halfway. Accept everything Jesus' sacrifice provided. If you don't examine yourself, 
If you receive communion just as a religious exercise, you will be eating and drinking unworthily, not discerning the Lord's body. Paul wrote, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. 1 Corinthians 11 and 30. When the first Passover was instituted, God instructed Moses to kill a lamb, to spread its blood over the door, and then roast the lamb and eat all of it. Any that remained was to be burned away. That sacrificial lamb was completely consumed. Jesus, as the Lamb of God, was a supreme sacrifice under the Abrahamic covenant. When you partake of his sacrifice, do not take only part of it. Take it all. Consume it completely. When you receive the Lord's Supper, do so like the children of Israel. Exodus 12, 11 says, And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. The children of Israel were ready to go. They ate in faith. See, when you take communion, you take it in faith. You ever, when you pray, you pray in faith. When you read your Bible, you read in faith. When you get up and go brush your teeth, you brush it in faith. <laughs> you practice doing everything in faith. Because while you brushing your teeth, when you finish, you say, Lord, I thank you. I got all of them, Lord. I thank you, Lord. They strong, healthy. When you wash your face, I see the image of Christ. I see the glory of God. Yeah, but you, nah, -uh, I ain't looking at here, Lee. I don't, I don't want to see here, Lee. <laughs> okay. The children, of Israel, the children of Israel were ready to go. They ate in faith. They were ready to receive their deliverance before they ate. Now, you got any pain or anything in your body, you, you ready to, you in faith. You go believe that you receive your healing before you take it. You eating it in faith. No matter what you may be faced with, sin, sickness, drug, a weight problem, worry, strife, old habits, you can be delivered through properly receiving the Lord's Supper. The body and blood of Jesus covered every area of our existence. By discerning his body and judging yourself before him, you can receive your deliverance. Place yourself before God and receive communion as the children of Israel did, ready to receive deliverance. You don't have to wait until you go to church to receive communion. Receive it at home. Get up an hour early in the morning every now and then. Take the time to put yourself before God over the communion table. It will be time well spent. I guarantee it. Praise God. All right, now you got a sheet. Take your sheet out. So when you get ready to take it at home, this is the, the proclamation before taking communion. You go proclaim some things. We can either, read, we, we, I, we, we, I'll just read it. But you got your sheet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we recognize that we have a covenant with you. A covenant that was ratified by the shed blood of Jesus at Calvary. Because of the fact that Jesus' body was broken for us, that his blood was shed in our behalf, we acknowledge that he bore sin, sickness, disease, sorrow, grief, fear, torment, unforgiveness, strife, and lack for us. Through his substitutionary sacrifice, we have complete redemption, total deliverance from the work of Satan. As new creatures in Jesus Christ, we realize our freedom has been bought and paid for. We are forgiven, we are redeemed, and we give thanks for it all in the name of Jesus. See, you do this. You read this every day. You, read, you want it to get in you. You read, and matter of fact, all the Brother Copeland's book, and you read the book, read it every day. Then once it gets in you, this, the, the word of God initially is like a little seed. The word of God for this, go work your ground. The word of God for this, go plant that seed, and it'll grow up. 
Deliverance. You, you, you house with deliverance. Something come to you, bam, because it got a wall. Bam, because it got a wall. Okay, we're going to pass out our communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. So you want to recognize the covenant. We have a covenant with God. That covenant was ratified by the blood of Jesus at, at, the, at, at Calvary. And he broke his body, was broken for us. <laughs> his blood was shed for us. Amen. Amen, amen. Now, that was just a proclamation. We proclaimed the covenant. We proclaimed the fact that Jesus' body was broken. We proclaimed his substitutionary sacrifice. We proclaimed that we had complete redemption. We, come, we already proclaimed that we got deliverance, total deliverance from the work of Satan. We proclaim that we are new creatures in Christ. And we realize our freedom has been bought and paid for. We free. Whom the Son has made free is what? Free indeed. And you shall know the truth. And that truth acted upon will make you free. All right. Now, we're going to judge and examine ourselves in the light. We made the proclamation of who we are. Now we're going to judge and examine ourselves in the light of God, uh, in the light of God's word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we examine our own hearts. We judge ourselves according to the authority of your word. In areas where we miss the mark, whether it's strife, unforgiving, unforgiveness, jealousy, envy, hate, covetousness, fear, worry, unbelief, whatever it may be. We take Jesus as our advocate and our high priest. We ask forgiveness according to the word of God in 1 John 1 and 9, which says, you are faithful and just to forgive us when we confess our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, we do not eat the bread nor drink the wine unworthily, but we rightly discern the Lord's body. We receive communion together now. As the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, we are free from the works of Satan, spirit, soul, and body. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we go, we go partake of the bread together. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do in remembrance of me. Partake of the bread together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Partake of the cup together. Okay. Now, we're going to make this confession. Repeat after me. Father, we give you thanks for all you have provided for us in Christ Jesus. We confess this day we are the blessed of the Lord. This covenant we enter into at the new birth is a covenant filled with the exceeding great and precious promises of God. And we are partakers of those promises now. We are healed. We are delivered. We are redeemed. We are delivered from all the authority of darkness. We are translated into the kingdom of God, dear son. We are the head. We are above. We come behind in no good thing. 
all that we set our hands to prosper. And we praise you, Father, for the newness of life we now enjoy. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.